How's it going guys? I'm Josh. I just got back from Channel Islands National Park, a really incredible park. And rather than doing a vlog, I thought we'd do something a little bit different. This is 10 reasons why you should visit a national park. And this is footage not just from Channel Islands, but I think the 9 and 10 other parks I visited in the last year, as well as photos I've taken from these parks. Anyway, let's get into it. Number one, this is some of the most beautiful nature you've ever seen. It's what inspires Thoreau, Emerson, and countless writers. It's what presidents like Teddy Roosevelt and FDR fought to protect. And some of the most strikingly majestic land in the US, preserved enough to maintain its beauty and natural ecosystems, but developed just enough to provide well-maintained trails and campgrounds to make this beauty accessible and somewhat safe. Ah, that sounded really pretentious, but true. Number two, on the topic of accessibility, national parks are some of the cheapest US vacations you could possibly take. Campgrounds are 15 a night, entrance fee to the park is usually 25, and the rest of the park is infinite free entertainment. So if you wanna take the cheapest US road trip possible, go grab yourself a sleeping bag and you'll be set. Back to beauty for number three, these national parks are usually a photographer's wet dream. Amazing bodies of water, lakes, oceans, rivers, or swamps are usually plentiful in the park, and water aside, there's so much to shoot and you'll never catch a better sunrise than in a national park, let me tell you. Number four, maybe cameras aren't your thing. Well, how about just observing the incredible animals you've probably never seen before outside of a zoo in their natural habitats. You get to experience these entirely new ecosystems here. And if that doesn't inspire a love of science and biology, I really don't know what will. <laughs> Number five, suppose you hate animals, photography, water, and beauty in general. How about people? Because you're gonna meet some of the nicest, most interesting and diverse groups of people in these parks. Can you help me? Oh, of course. Yeah. Just uh, this one. All right, guys. <laughs> National park on three. Yeah. One, two, three. Yeah. National yeah. park. Thank you so much. Happy New Year. Locals on day trip, people traveling cross country, and tourists traveling from across the world. And trail culture is remarkably friendly. So everyone you pass is probably gonna say hi and people are always down to lend a helping hand or have a conversation. So go talk to some strangers. We just bumped into the hitchhikers we found on the way here. Hi. Hi. <laughs> what are your names? Gianluca. Michael. And where are you guys from? <laughs> we are Italian yeah. employee. <laughs> it's the second time in this machine. Number six, you might be thinking, well, sorry, I actually hate people. Well, me too, and that's why national parks are great, because there is no cell phone service. They are the perfect place to be truly alone. And we're not talking just like Home Alone 3, you're alone in your house for two hours. We're talking you're the only person or group of people for a couple of miles. Rice and beans! James! You're truly alone. Whether you're by yourself or just with a few close friends, you're guaranteed to have your own space, perfect for relaxing, clearing your mind, and just bonding with your friends. Or self-bonding, if you're so inclined. Is that a euphemism? I don't know. Number seven, another perk of being alone is less light pollution. You know what that means? Is stars. I have never seen clear skies full of thousands of stars in the Milky Way like I have in national parks, and it is truly awe-inspiring. And the ultimate perk of being alone, number eight, is you get to pee wherever you damn well please. Look at this beautiful, oh my, oh, there's Kyle peeing. K, got the Y in there. The K and the Y were going strong. And then the L is where it went wrong. Yeah, that's why I drink water. Not to hydrate, just so I can write more with pee. Number nine, national parks are humbling. Uh, this place is beautiful. This has all the amenities. Table. That's about it. You're gonna be sleeping on the ground, cooking outside, eating way too many PB&Js. You're roughing it with limited resources, which makes you really appreciate what you've got. The best meals I've ever eaten have been made on a propane stove after a long day of hiking because you know you've worked for that meal. And as a result, you also appreciate modern luxury more than ever before. The best showers I've ever taken have been after four or five days of camping, and the best night's sleep I've ever had have been in my bed for the first time in a couple days because you've been sleeping on the ground. Incredible. And finally, number 10, national parks are the ultimate customizable adventure that'll make you love your country in a new type of way. There's something for everyone in these parks, and while my friends and I like roughing it in tents, many parks have nice cozy lodges and restaurants available. And there's a massive range of activities you can do. Hiking, reading, swimming, kayaking, scuba diving, climbing. And many parks you can even drive through and never walk too far if you're not in the right shape for it. Like Shenandoah National Park, for example, has plenty of scenic overlooks. So if you're not in the shape for walking, you can totally go to a national park still. And if you want to do a 30 mile hike, 
Yes, national parks. To sum all this up, national parks make for the ultimate US road trip. No matter what kind of budget you're on or what you're trying to do activity wise, there are plenty of options for you and there's probably a national park within driving distance of you because they're spread out throughout the country. So whether you want to take a day trip or a week long camping extravaganza, there is a national park for you and I guarantee you're going to have a great time outside, you're going to get some great exercise and you're going to have a hearty adventure with your friends or family. So go make it happen. It's worth it. All right, and that is it. Hopefully I made a solid case for you to visit one of these national parks. A couple things to make it even easier on you. First off, I want you to leave a comment down below if you have any more questions about visiting these parks. So if you want to see a video about what I pack, how I plan these trips, leave a comment and maybe if enough people ask, I can do it. Second, I'll be putting a link down below to a national park map so you can see which one is closest to you. And if there's not a really close one, there's probably a great state park nearby as well or any park that'll do the job with the camping and all that great outdoorsy stuff. Third, I have a bunch of vlogs at these national parks, so if you want to know what the experience is like with a little more detail, you can definitely check out this playlist full of vlogs, links somewhere around here. I also have a website full of all of my national park photos if you want to check it out, and I also have an Instagram where you can stay up to date with all of my new photos, new videos, etc, etc. Social media is great, and that is all I have to say. Thank you guys so much for watching, hopefully I've convinced you to go outside, and that is all I have to say. I will see you eventually. Also, one last thing, if you're into hiking and sociology and reading, this book is incredible. I just finished it and it was fascinating. I learned so much about all kinds of trails from goat trails to elephant trails to ant trails to human trails. Great, great, interesting book and I'll put a link to buy it somewhere around here. That's all. Tell what he had for breakfast. <laughs>